Integrity is more than just being honest, it's wholeness. That what you say is what you mean. And what you mean is what you say. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. What an enviable goal to actually place him in a position that he could lift up, not in a self-centered way, himself as someone to emulate as he follows our Lord. So Paul says, be alert, be diligent, be watchful, be very wise and careful. Share, shed yourself from these dogs, these mutilators. What, uh, it seems condescending. What is he talking about? He says these false teachers were saying that you had to be circumcised in order to be saved. What they're really saying is that you got to do something to be accepted by God. And some of these people, indeed many people, have Strong fortitude, ladies and gentlemen, don't misread me. Many people have internal strength. They have great discipline. They've been able to master themselves, which is good, but to have great discipline and to be able to master yourself doesn't make you a Christian. This is true of Paul himself when he was a man called Saul. Paul said the believers are the true circumcision. You see, circumcision was a Sacrificial was a, a right to cut away, to cut away the flesh, physical flesh, for people who are special in the eyes of God. And he used that illustratively in another place to cut away the disbelieving heart of stone and give it a heart of flesh. Paul said, I don't place any confidence in the flesh. When he says the flesh, he's talking about this, the sinful nature, you see. But Paul had a testimony that could rival these false Judaizers' testimony about placing confidence in the flesh. Because he did. And he accomplished much through discipline and human effort. And so Paul is saying, if you want to brag, I got bragging rights. I can go there. Paul is saying, I had certain power at my disposal and I was very confident in my human effort. I had skills and abilities that allowed me to excel past all my contemporaries. I was moving up the religious ladder. Circumcised on the eighth day in the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. What he's saying, he's, he's speaking to his upbringing, his national prominence, his family background, his inheritance, his credentials. Regarding the law, I was a Pharisee. What does that mean? He means that he, he speaks to the devotion of his Jewish sect who kept the law to the letter far beyond the Ten Commandments. As for zeal, I persecuted the church. It speaks to his power that he was given to uproot and destroy this sect called Christianity. They didn't call it Christianity. They called it the way. And he used his internal strength, his great discipline to destroy these people, to root out this heresy called Christianity. But how many know God had a plan? God struck him down, changed his entire life. And now he teaches not to place any confidence in the human nature. What I am or who I am because what I have or who I am lifts me up and not Christ. Paul is saying that now I understand that my relationship with God is not based on what I did, but what he did. Hallelujah. Paul realized that his human pedigree of supposed right living were all those things that he thought would bring him gain, but it actually hindered him. It puffed him up. How many know knowledge puffs up, but love builds up? 
Therefore, he said, I don't place any confidence in the flesh anymore. Because when Christ is not behind it, it's tainted by the human nature. And as a result, human effort accomplishes nothing and make him be right with God. And that's why Paul said he hadn't arrived yet. For how could he? Just like all of us, he had so much more to learn, so much more to let go of. How could that be, Paul? Most Bible scholars would agree that the Apostle Paul was arguably one of the greatest Christians the world has ever known. He had impeccable credentials. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He had this masterful work that we all love, which was the channel by which we're all saved as Gentiles. Salvation by faith and justification by grace. But in spite of all of his accomplishments, I'm going somewhere. He realized that he's still work in progress. Do you believe that you're still work in progress? That God is still perfecting him, still pruning him, still shaping him, still opening up untapped areas of the Holy Ghost, new vistas of God's glory. So Paul is saying, I haven't arrived because I know the damaging impact of the human nature that I still must shed some baggage because I've learned that all human effort to gain God's favor is wasted effort and therefore I place no confidence in human effort and now compared to what I know about Christ, I must lose and shed the baggage.